Alpine, who's enduring one of the worst starts to its F1 campaign, is now also understood to be abandoning its current engine supplier and switching to a customer engine team rather than using its engines. This move is akin to Ferrari abandoning its power unit for a Mercedes engine or vice versa. But as shocking as it sounds, things are so bad that the team is understood to be in negotiations with several other engine manufacturers. The team, which is currently powered by Renault engines, stands at a critical juncture. The 2026 season brings significant changes to F1's engine regulations, pushing teams to innovate like never before. These new rules are designed to push the boundaries of hybrid technology while promoting sustainability, with key changes including a higher electrical power output and the use of 100% sustainable fuels. Alpine's decision to stick with Renault or pursue a new path with another engine supplier is monumental. Renault engines have been subpar since the start of the turbo hybrid era, leading to an underpowered inconsistent power unit. The new regulations could either level the playing field or widen the gap. If Alpine decides to go the customer team route, they have a few strong options. Mercedes, Ferrari and Honda are potential suppliers. Each of these manufacturers offers unique benefits and challenges. Mercedes engines are known for their reliability and performance, Ferrari has made significant strides in recent years, and Honda in its Red Bull powertrains guise are the current world champions and are set to return officially with Aston Martin in 2026. However, switching to a customer engine isn't just about raw performance. Integration is key. How well can a new power unit be adapted to Alpine's chassis and overall design philosophy? Becoming a customer team could have significant advantages for Alpine, freeing them from the complexities and costs associated with engine development. But there are downsides too. Without a bespoke power unit, Alpine might face limitations in optimising performance to the fullest extent. Former team principal Flavio Briatore has made a sensational return to Alpine as a consultant. Known for his controversial past, including the infamous Crashgate scandal, Briatore's return has sparked a wave of criticism and concern. Sky F1 pundit Damon Hill has been particularly vocal, fearing Briatore's comeback could bring back an era of skullduggery to the sport. Hill expressed his concerns. It's extraordinary. I just don't get it. It's baffling to me. I'm very disappointed. We just don't want to go back into a world where there's skullduggery and stuff going on that leaves a bad taste. Despite these strong words, Briatore has brushed off the criticism, responding sharply and making it clear he is here to stay. Briatore, known for his direct approach, responded to Hill's comments with a blunt retort. He dismissed the criticism and emphasised his focus on making Alpine competitive. We already have a team principal. We have Bruno Farman. There are no problems. It is my job to guarantee the best performance of the team. I'm not going to start changing tyres or even driving the car. I just want to be competitive. We'll be ready in two years. Flavio is currently on a special assignment from Renault Group Chief Luca De Meo. His main responsibilities include restoring balance and stability to the team during a turbulent period, recruiting top drivers, such as Pierre Gasly, and searching for a teammate for Gasly. Additionally, he is tasked with hiring new staff to strengthen the team's ranks and technical leadership. Flavio, however, is wasting no time. Another intriguing development involves Alpine's efforts to sign Carlos Sainz for 2025. Briatore was seen exchanging phone numbers with Carlos Sainz Sr., fueling speculation about a potential move. With Alpine's recent struggles, bringing in a driver of Sainz's calibre could be a game-changer. Since Briatore's return was first reported several weeks ago, it was anticipated he could change the playing field for the Enstone team in the driver market helping the French squad acquire the best talents, both from an engineering and driving perspective, is his priority. Highlighting other areas of weakness, in terms of infrastructure or procedure, is also within Briatore's prerogative. Ultimately, Alpine's decision on their engine supplier and the impact of Briatore's return will be guided by their long-term strategy. The decision to become a customer team is crucial and historic. It is sure to raise some questions. Is it a wise decision for a works team to abandon their own power plant and bank on the new regulations to level the playing field? Or will they take a leap of faith with a new engine supplier, hoping to reignite their championship aspirations? This decision could be pivotal. What do you think? Should Alpine stay loyal to Renault, or is it time for a change? And how will Briatore's return influence the team's future? 
Share your thoughts in the comments below.